Amazon Redshift, Amazon RDS, Document DB, Dynamo DB. What exactly are these? Well, these are some of the wonderful database choices that you have in Amazon AWS. But how do you know which one to use when and what are their use cases? Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard and all these services, their use cases and the real exam like questions based on these services that you can expect in AWS Cloud Practitioner exam coming up in this video. Let's get started. So here comes the first question for today's episode. Question number 126, part 13. Question says that which AWS services or features provide disaster recovery solutions for Amazon EC2 instances? And you have to pick two options. The given choices are option A, reserved instances, option B, EC2 Amazon machine images or AMIs, option C, AWS Shield, option D, Amazon Elastic Block Store Snapshots, and option E, Amazon Guard Duty. And the correct answer for this question is option B, EC2 Amazon Machine Images and option D, Amazon Elastic Block Store Snapshot. Now let's look at some more details on each of these services. So firstly, we have Amazon Machine Images and this one, my friends, is a pre-configured virtual machine image that contains the operating system, application software and any other required components needed to launch the instance. AMIs can be used to create new instances in the same or different region, which can be useful for disaster recovery purposes. And then secondly, we have Amazon Elastic Block Store Snapshot. So Amazon EBS is a block storage service for use with Amazon EC2 instances and EBS snapshots are point in time copies of an EBS volume that can be used to create a new volume or restore existing volume. And then EBS snapshot can be used to recover data in the events of an instance failure or to create new instance in a different region or availability zones. So that's why because of these features of these two services, these are the correct options for this question. Moving on with the question number 127, which says which cloud architecture design concept is supported by distributing workloads across various availability zones. Your options are implement automation, option B, design for agility, Option C, design for failure. And lastly, implement elasticity. The correct answer is option C, design for failure. So friends, when you have workloads across various availability zones, then you are designing for failure. In case one availability zone is down, it does not affect your workloads because you have other availability zones sharing the workloads and keeping the application alive. Question number 128, question says that who is responsible for the configuration management of infrastructure under the AWS shared responsibility model? Four options are given. Option A, it is solely the responsibility of the customer. Option B, it is solely the responsibility of AWS. Option C, it is shared between AWS and the customer. And lastly, option D, it is not part of the AWS shared responsibility model. And the correct answer for this question is option B. It is solely the responsibility of AWS. Let's check out some more details. So configuration management. Well, AWS maintains the configuration of its infrastructure devices, but a customer is responsible for configuring their own guest operating system, databases and application. So in case the question changes in the real exam and the question asks you who is responsible for guest operating system, databases and application. In that case, the correct answer would be it is solely the responsibility of the customer. So I hope you understood the distinction when it comes to the infrastructure that management lies with AWS. And when it comes to the application databases and operating system, that part of the responsibility is shouldered by the customer. Moving on with the question number 129, question says a company is developing a mobile app that needs high performance NoSQL database. Which AWS service could the company use for this database? And you have to pick two options. The given choices are option A, Amazon RDS, option B, Amazon Redshift, option C, Amazon Document DB, and option D, Amazon DynamoDB. So friends, Amazon Document DB is a fully managed native JSON document database that makes it easy and cost effective to operate critical document workloads at virtually any scale without managing infrastructure. And also Amazon Document DB simplifies your architecture by providing built-in security best practices, continuous backups and native integrations with other AWS services. On the other hand, Amazon DynamoDB is a fully managed serverless key value NoSQL database designed to run high performance application at any scale. DynamoDB offers built-in security and continuous backup 
automated multi-region replication, in-memory caching, and data import and export tools. So you can read about Amazon Document DB and Dynamo DB in these two documentation. The links are shared in the description box. Now let's move on to the question number 130. Question says a company wants to limit its employees AWS access to a portfolio predefined AWS resources. Which AWS solution should the company use to meet this requirement? Options given are AWS Config, Option B, AWS Software Development Kits, Option C, AWS Service Catalog, and Option D, AWS App Sync. So are you able to guess the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is option C, AWS Service Catalog. And in case you want more details on AWS Service Catalog, well, it lets you centrally manage your cloud resources to achieve governance at a scale of your infrastructure as a code templates written in cloud formation or Terraform configuration. With AWS Service Catalog, you can meet the compliance requirement while make sure your customers can quickly deploy the cloud resources they need. And of course, you can get all the details that you need on AWS Service Catalog. A wonderful video is also given. Please check it out. And with that, let's move on to the question number 131. Question says that which AWS service provides a cloud-based integrated development environment or IDE that lets you write, run and debug your code with just a browser without needing to install any software or configure servers. Your options are AWS Code Star, Option B, AWS Code Build, Option C, Amazon Workspaces, and Option D, AWS Cloud9. And the correct answer for this question is Option D, AWS Cloud9. Let's quickly move to the question number 132. It says, which of the following is a suggestion made by an AWS trusted advisor? You have to pick two. Options are auditing, Option B, cost optimization, Option C, serverless architecture, Option D, performance, and lastly, Option E, scalability. And please remember, you have to pick two options. The first one is option B, cost optimization. And the second one is option D, performance. Coming up next is question number 133, which says which pillar of AWS well-architect framework is supported by the design philosophy of performing operations as code? Your options are performance efficiency, option B, operational excellence, option C, reliability, and lastly, option D, security. And the correct answer for this question is option B, operational excellence. So let's validate our answer. Here you can see I'm in the operational excellence. Here in the very first point that says perform operations as a code. Here you can read in the cloud, you can apply the same engineering discipline that you can use for the application code to your entire environment. And you can read the entire paragraph. For now, I just want to concentrate on this last line, which says by performing operations as a code, you limit human error and enable consistent responses to the events. So this is the validation of our answer. Moving on with the question number 134 that says a company wants to review its monthly cost by using Amazon EC2 and Amazon RDS for the past year. Which AWS service or tool provides this information? And your options are AWS Trusted Advisor, Option B, Cost Explorer, Option C, Amazon Forecast, and Option D, Amazon CloudWatch. And what's the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is option B, Cost Explorer. So here, my friends, on this documentation, you can understand about AWS Cost Explorer, which is a tool that enables you to view and analyze your cost and usage. And this brings us to the question number 135, which says, which of the following are included in AWS Enterprise Support? You have to choose two options. The given options are AWS Technical Account Manager or TAM, AWS Partner-led Support, Option C is AWS Professional Services. Option D, support of the third-party software integration to AWS. And lastly, 5-minute response time for critical issues. So, what is the first correct option according to you? Well, the very first correct option is Option A, AWS Technical Account Manager. And then we have option D, support of the third-party software integration to AWS. So those were the 10 exciting and very latest questions on AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. I hope you have liked them all and definitely gained some knowledge. If yes, please give this video a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon to receive the timely notifications. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.